Hi students, welcome back. Let's continue with our microprocessor subject. Now in this video, I am going to explain the minimum mode of 8086 microprocessor. So here I have given a minimum mode structure of 8086 microprocessor. So by seeing this much of structure, don't get confused. It's a very, very simple concept. Let me explain it. Actually, whenever you have seen 8086 and sometimes they are used to give the 8088 also. Don't get confused because 8086 and 8088 both can be configured to work either in minimum mode or maximum mode. Only these two processors can be work either in minimum mode and maximum mode. So sometimes they are used to write 8088 also because that can also work in minimum mode and maximum mode. Okay. Now we are working on minimum mode, right? Minimum mode. Actually, if you see the structure here, the, the whether our uh, processor is working in minimum mode or maximum mode, everything is depends upon this MN by MX bar only. Whenever the MN by MX is, okay, MN by MX bar is equal to 1 then your microprocessor is going to operate it in minimum mode. That means MN is 1. MX, okay, if you place 1 here, 1 bar means 0. That is maximum becomes 0. Maximum becomes 0 and the minimum is 1. That means MN by MX bar is 1 means the microprocessor is operating configured in a minimum mode. Suppose this MN by MX bar is 0. That is connected to the ground. So, in place of MN0, if you take, it is not in minimum mode. 0 bar. 0 bar means 1. That means it is operated in maximum mode. So, this is for maximum. So, first point is, whether your circuit is in minimum mode or maximum mode, first you have to check this. If MN by MX bar is logic 1 means, obviously it is minimum mode. If it is logic 0 means, it is in maximum mode. Okay, the first point you get a clarity on that. Means for select uh, deciding which mode it is, you have decided. The next point is actually minimum mode. So when you are using the minimum mode circuits and when you are using the maximum mode circuits. L let me explain you with the concept before working on this circuit. The point that you have to remember student, the minimum mode or typically for smaller when you are working with the smaller, typically for smaller and contains a, contains a single processor. Whenever your mic, uh, system, the CPU is having a single processor, that means it is operating at a minimum mode. If only one processor is there, that is only one functional unit is there, then your processor is working on a minimum mode. So, in this mode, the microprocessor chip itself gives out all the control signal because th this becomes a master this is only the master okay this is only the single chip single processor that it is a master it is only controlling all the signals in the minimum mode okay and coming to the remaining components whatever the components that you have seen in the diagram the coming to the remaining components this is 8282 8286 and 8284 these are all the remaining components or latches trans receivers okay clock generator and some uh, memory and io devices memory and io device decoder is connecting which are 3 is to 8 mem uh, memory and io device are connected so this is a processor which is going to control the signals the main processor and the remaining components if you see here there are four components are connected to 8086 microprocessor now let's have a look on each and every pin in clearly. So first coming to the clock generator. Coming to first this side. If you see 8284 it's a clock generator. This clock generator is providing clock signal. So which is giving a clock signal to 8086 microprocessor. Reset pin and ready pin. These are the output pins for the clock generator and input to 8086. So, why we are using this clock generator? It is used to generate the clock. Why it is generating the clock? To synchronize some external signals with the system clock. The main thing here is, why we are using clock means to synchronize the data. 
first of all to synchronize the data only we are giving the clock pulses so which is uh, going to synchronize from external signals whatever the external signals are coming system radio reset circuit the external signals are coming this clock generator is synchronizing the signals with the system clock this is what the clock generator is doing now coming to the the pins address bus ad not to ad 15 a 16 a 19 okay and uh, uh, a16 to a19 and these are some status signals or that so what here this completely you call it as address bus if you see here this is an address bus the address from the address bus is latched to 8282 if you see here this is 8 bit latch 8 bit latch so this consisting of three latches are present it consists of three latches why the three 8 bit latches are there because the address from address bus is latched to 8282 which is an 8 bit latch which is an 8 bit latch three such latches are needed why we required three such latches because 8086 is going to generate a 20 bit address bus 8086 always generate an address in 20 bit address bus but here we are using 8 bit latches so 83 is how much 24 so we are taking if you want to generate a 20 bit address we required three latches we required three latches so this is address so here an address is going to generate to 8 bit latches next ale if you take if you see clearly address latch enable pin ale ale the address latch enable of 8086 is connected to the strobe of this latch here ale is the output to 8086 the first thing is ale is output to 8086 so what this signal is doing this signal is used to demultiplex remember students it is the main work of address latch enable is demultiplexing ad not to ad15 to a not to a15 and d not to d15 so that the address will be sent to over address bus and the data will be sent to the data receiver d not to d15 to separate the multiplexed to separate the multiplexed address and data data to demultiplex you have to use the address latch enable whenever this address latch enable pin is one the data and address are demultiplexed and the address will be going on address bus and data will be going on data bus so the data bus is connected to the tra data trans receivers which consisting of two 8 to 86 latches which are 8 bit why i am taking only two here i have taken three because address bus is a 20 bit address but data is of 16 bit only this is a 20 bit and this data bus is only 16 bit register 8086 data bus is 16 bit register and whereas address bus is 20 bit so that's why it requires three latches and here it requires only two latches because 82s are 16 okay so these uh, address and data uh, d not to d15 and a not to ad15 will be demultiplex by using this external latches so the data bus is driven through 8286 which is an 8 bit data trans receivers so two such trans receivers are needed as bus is of 16 bit as data bus is of 16 bit now this data bus this trans receiver is controlled by two control signals if you clearly observe there are two control signals which are connected to data trans receivers what is this two control signals are doing den is the data enable pin so whenever the data enable pin it is going to inform it is going to inform the trans receivers that the cpu is ready to send or receive the data means data enable is to tell to the trans receiver that the cpu is ready to send or receive the data that will be identified by the data enable pin then what is by dt by dr bar 
data transmit or receive. So whenever the control data flow direction is high, whenever it is high, that is whenever high means 1 by 1 bar, that means 1 by 0, 1 means the data is going to be transmitted. Whenever this pin is of low, 0 by 0 bar, the data is going to be received. So even though if you enable the pin, whether you have to transmit the data or you have to receive the data, that will be identified by DT by R bar pin. I will tell you here student. If you take DE N bar and DT by R bar. So whenever 1 and don't care is there. 1 means 0 bar. 0 bar means what action it is going to be taken? The trans receiver is disabled. Means this chip, whatever this uh, chip is there, 8286 chip is there, that is disabled. Suppose 0, 0 is there. 0 bar means 1. That means data pin is unable. The CPU is ready to transmit the data as well as to receive the data. So 0 means data is, uh, data transmit 0 means the CPU is not uh, transmitting the data. It is ready to receive the data. Action is ready to receive the data. Suppose 0, 1 means 1 bar 0. DT is 1 means data is transmitting. CPU is transmitting the data. So, based on these two pins only, whether the CPU is transmitting the data or receiving the data is identified. Okay, I hope you understand what this P circuit is and what this address, this is only generating the address. Okay, bus high enable which indicates the bus, address bus is going to send the uh, separating connected to the address bus. And this is for data bus. And now coming to this. This is nothing but a 74138 3-8 decoder which is connected to control buses. Means control signals is generating here. This is the address signals, address bus and data bus and here this is the control signals. So the control signals for all operations are generated by decoding only M by IO bar, read bar, write bar. With the help of these three signals only the control bus is going to generate the signals. So, what it is doing? Now, let me explain you. M by IO bar, RD bar, WR bar. And what is the action it is going to be performed? So, whenever these signals are 1, 0, 1 is there. 1 means memory operation is doing. Because 1 bar 0 means IO not. So, memory operation is performing. So, memory operation, what operation it is performing? 0 bar means 1. That means memory read operation is performing memory read means cpu is ready to read the memory memory read operation is performing suppose 1 1 0 is there that means memory write operation and 0 0 so 0 means 0 bar io operation is going to be performed and 0 bar means 1 that means io read operation and similarly, 0, 1, 0 means I will write operation. So, based on the signals here, based on the signals here, I will read, I will write, memory read, memory write, control bus signals or connecting to the memory as well as the I will devices for activating the memory units and I will units. So, based on this control signals, the data is going to be taken with the help of this address bus. So, these three should be compulsory connected uh, to the memory and I.O. devices. Okay. Now, coming to this part here. On the left hand side. If you clearly observe here. NMI, INTR, NTA. These three are interrupt signals. These three are interrupt signal. When the interrupt signals are activated. Whenever any external devices wants to communicate with the CPU. Then these interrupt signals are enabled. So, whenever this INTR is 1, it shows there is a sequence request or coming. Whenever it is 1 is there, a sequence request or coming. And acknowledgement means whenever the processor is ready to send the, uh, receive the data or to send the data, this interrupt acknowledgement will be activated. Okay. And coming to the hold and hold acknowledgement students, the hold and hold acknowledgements are nothing but 
DMA controller. These are connected to the DMA controller. So DMA controller which is of, uh, it's a bus DMA request is done using only hold. Whenever DMA wants to transmit the data, it sends the hold signal to the CPU. So whenever the CPU is seeing the hold signal from DMA, it hand over the system bus to the DMA by sending the acknowledgement. Okay. And this you already know, NMI is the non-maskable interrupt, a leading edge transition which causes the processor go to the interrupt protein after current instruction is executed. Only after current instruction is executed, then only the processor will take the interrupt request. Otherwise, it won't take. Until the completion of the current instruction, the processor will not take the interrupt request, even though it is of high priority. Okay, that is a non-maskable interrupt. So, this is what the minimum mode of 8086 microprocessor student. So, one point you have to remember that the minimum uh, mode of 8086 will be operated only on a single processor. And all these components are same for the maximum mode also. In the next video, I will explain with the maximum mode of 8086 microprocessor. Thank you.